Hi, my name is Dr. Russell Betts. I'm the Chief Scientist here at Go Chemist. I'm here today to present our next video in the series of videos called Pool Chemistry 101. Your backyard swimming pool is a dangerous chemical cocktail designed to eliminate pathogens from growing or propagating in your pool to make it more pleasant to swim in, shall we say. But those chemicals are extraordinarily dangerous and it would be nice if there was a safer, more convenient alternative to this chemical concoction that we're throwing into our pool every weekend and maybe in a subsequent video we'll learn a little bit more about that. But for right now let's learn about the chemical soup in our backyard. We all know that chlorine goes into our pools to, to help eliminate pathogens. We all know that. But chlorine is really a gas. Chlorine is Cl2. So it's not really chlorine, but it's a variant of chlorine. And there's two of them that are commonly used. The two that are commonly used is called sodium hypochlorite or calcium hypochlorite. Either one will do. Either one, either one will do the same thing. What they're designed to do basically is, is kill bacteria and fungus and algae chemically. They'll chemically kill them. But keep in mind though, chlorine is light sensitive. It's also heat sensitive. The pool chlorine is heat sensitive. Which means that you have to keep adding it every weekend basically to keep the chlorine levels high enough so that things like bacteria and viruses can be eliminated. If the pool, if the pool chlorine for, falls too low, uh, things like algae and bacteria will propagate in your pool making it unpleasant to swim in. So you've got to keep adding these chemicals. Now, the industry has developed another chemical, yes, one more chemical, that will help to protect your chlorine from degra degradation. And that chemical is called cyanuric acid. This is a structure of cyanuric acid right here. It's designed to help stabilize the chlorine in your pool. It's called a pool stabilizer. All it's designed to do really is to help prevent the light degradation and the heat degradation of your chlorine in your pool. And that's all it really does. Lately, or more recently on the market, has come another chemical, yes, one more chemical, called trichlor. Trichlor is right here. Trichlor, as you can see, is very similar to cyanuric acid. In fact, it's chemically related to it. This molecule, or the chemical, can form sodium hypochlorite in your water and cyanuric acid at the same time. It's a much more convenient chemical to use, but it still gives you the same two chemicals. You're not adding less chemicals to your pool, you're just adding the same amount of chemicals at one time. That's uh, how trichlor works. Now we all know, all of us backyard pool owners know, that when you add chlorine to your pool, you also have to measure the pH. The pH is simply a measurement of acidity. The higher the number of the pH, say around pH 14, that's very basic. The lower the pH number, say around pH 1 or 2, that's very acidic. For example, the ocean's pH is about 8.1, slightly basic. A can of Coke, about 3.5, very acidic. Your pool wants to be right around 7.4. That's the optimum pH for sodium hypochlorite to work. Um, in order to keep it there, you have to add either an acid or a base depending on what your pool pH is. So you go out on a Saturday morning, take a sample from your pool water, find out the pH and you find out, oh, it's 9. It's pH 9. That's way too high. You've got to bring it down. In order to bring the pH down, you have to add an acid. And there are two commonly used acids in pool chemistry. One is muriatic acid, which is right here. Muriatic acid is simply hydrochloric acid. It's a dangerous industrial chemical. You have to be trained professional to use it or you could get very hurt. There's a skin hazard, you can burn yourself, or there's, in, there's also an inhalation hazard, you can burn your lungs if you inhale it, it's very dangerous. The industry has responded to that by providing what's called a dry acid. A dry acid is sodium bisulfate. Sodium bisulfate is another industrial chemical. It's also dangerous in the wrong hands, you have to know what you're doing to use it. I've got a PhD in chemistry, I'm very comfortable using it. You probably don't have this, you probably don't have the experience of handling chemicals through most of your career, so it might be a little bit intimidating for you. So it, it, it really can be dangerous, you have to be careful. So let's take for another example, you test your pool, you've added too much acid, now your pool's acidic. You've got to bump it back up. It's kind of like we call it here at Go Chemist, we call that chasing the pH. The pH is too high, you've got to bring it down, now it's too low, you've got to bring it up. Kind of frustrating, kind of annoying, kind of a lot of work to do on a Saturday afternoon. If your pool chemistry is too acidic, you have to make it more basic. To do that, you add another chemical. Yep, one more chemical. This is sodium bicarbonate. It's a very commonly used pool chemical. This is baking soda. It's pretty harmless to you, but you still have to buy it. You still have to throw it in your pool. And this one's sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate is another way to bump your pool pH back up to 7.4. It's also relatively harmless. They're not dangerous at all, but you still have to buy them and you still have to do it. Keep in mind, the pool chemistry must be maintained very specifically in order for it to be effective. This does sound like a lot of work. This is a lot of work. I, as a chemist, would not want to do this on my Saturday afternoons when I'd rather be playing with my children. 
So let's think about a more convenient, safer, more effective way to prevent this, to prevent your pool from growing bacteria or fungus. And in subsequent videos, I will show you that there is a more effective method. And I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And I would like to say again, my name is Russell Betts. I'm the chief scientist here at Go Chemlis, And I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much.